Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Skitty. And Lab here. Coming at you with the top 10 Sony classics that need a remake part two. Let's get it popping. Starting with number one, that's gonna have to be the Chrono Cross slash Chrono Trigger series. Chrono Trigger came out in 1995, and then Chrono Cross came out in 1999. I mean, these are good times during the RPG era, during the role-playing game era. And essentially, one day the character, you know, you wake up and he finds out he drowned like 10 years later, and you switch back and forth between different universes. And in between going back and forth in time, what you did in the past affected the game or affected what you did in the future, and you can interact with your future and past self in the game. I mean, Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger were both detailed, heavy story driven RPGs that would benefit essentially from modern graphics and a newer, fresher way to tell that story. Similar to what was done with the Final Fantasy games that came out here, the modern Final Fantasy games, how the battle system changed, but the core element of storytelling remained. So yeah, definitely Chrono Cross or Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. I mean, Chrono Trigger came out in 1996 on the S. NES, so it's not hard to imagine that that game could be bundled in, say, with Chrono Cross, the eventual sequel. Man, one of the one things that I loved about Chrono Cross as well is that the fact that you did certain stuff, you got certain people on your team, or you received different characters. But coming in at number two, I got Vagrant Story. This game came out back around like early 2000s. Man. The, the 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 way that the the rpg attack system was set up back then and the story alone man i tell you it was way ahead of its time back in the day damn vaguer story i remember that john definitely could benefit from a remake or a uh, reintroduction if you will of that story and even possible future spin-offs coming in at number three i'm gonna have to give it to the legacy of kane series not just one game in particular but the whole entire series overall but most importantly the game that deserves the most credit or the most deserving of a remake would be legacy of kane soul reaver 2. the combat was amazing where you could dodge and say uh, use your claws and talons and you can also use the soul reaver weapon to that where but if you spam that john you know what i mean or you use it too much it would also drain raziel that's the main character who's also a dead vampire so imagine soul reaver or that whole entire series like remade right with updated graphics or say ray tracing where you could have real-time lighting simulated throughout the levels in the game or just an overall shift in graphics or modern graphics make it happen or especially over on the pc y'all make it happen man the hours i spent on soul reaver trying to get to certain places because you know he couldn't fly because Kane ripped his wings off. Agony. Before he can only fly. Trying to get them special powers, man. Woo, Soul Reaver was crazy. But coming in at number four, we got Battle Arena Toshinden. Battle Arena Toshinden came out around 96. It was an excellent fighting game, way ahead of his time. One of my favorite characters on there, his name was Sho. You had to do extra stuff to get him. He was like the Akuma of the Battle Arena Toshinden universe. Man, that was that work. Awesome stuff, Skitty. I never played Battle Arena Toshinden, but with its vibrant colors and that gameplay, it definitely looks lit. I would check it out. I play it, and Skitty knows I don't really play fighting games. But coming in at number five, I'm gonna have to give it to the video game called One. One released in 1997. It was a linear 3D platform shooter with a dynamic camera that like shifted or changed perspectives throughout the action. The story is pretty straightforward. Like the main character, the protagonist, you wake up in an apartment and you find out you have a gun attached to your arm. And then you also find out that the whole entire city is trying to kill you. You were able to say, utilize that gun arm to evade your enemies, but you were also able to use punch and kick combos. You kind of had a couple different ways you can go about clearing each level, but the dynamic camera shifted in between perspectives was really dope. And that game too, with upgraded or modern graphics could really change the scope on how we view or how we play like side scrolling or perspective based video games. One, I never really played that game. You know, I saw it a few times, you know, saw some gameplay. It looked all right. Coming in at number six, we got a hidden gem called Tobo Number One. Now, some people probably be familiar with Tobo Number One because it was one of the first fighting games of PlayStation. It came out back in 96, along with the game that I mentioned earlier, Battle Arena Toshin. Now, with Tobo Number One, you could explore go around picking up items to make your player stronger but also you went around and you fought characters other characters as well but how you fought them was in a versus versus type situation which I think the game fight game the fight game job 
but it has its RB aspect to it. So definitely, definitely Tobo number one needs to make a comeback. Tobo number one looks good. It's a game I haven't heard of or I didn't play back when it was out on the PlayStation, but it looks good and again, looks worthy of a modern or remaster or remake. But coming in at number seven, it's gonna to have to be a definite must or a definite classic. I know a lot of gamers, you know what I mean, for me and Skitty's generation definitely played this game and that's going to be Tenchu Stealth Assassins. Tenchu Stealth Assassin was released in 1999. It's a stealth-based video game where you could play between two different characters. It's a dedicated stealth game which centered on uh, maintaining the status quo as a ninja. So unlike modern games where you can blend up the action between say running in there, guns blazing, you know what I mean, or you can take the stealth route like in Far Cry or something like that. I mean Tenchu was a dedicated stealth game where you actually had to, you know, take on the mantle of being a ninja. You actually had to strike from the shadows. You had to use your equipment and things you could switch between two characters and they each had like their own benefits right like one had more health but it was a little slower but one was like had least health but was also quicker more agile set in the Sengoku era of Japan I mean again it has such a deep and rich history you wouldn't even have to start off say an anime that could pick off where the games took off or the anime could say take place before the events that lead up in the game but I don't know Skitty what do you think you think Tenchu Stealth Assassin would be a good anime Man, you darn real Tenshu be a hot anime. Shoot, it'd probably be even a crazy live action too because it was more realistic than, you know, another type ninja game back then. Definitely, I like the way how, you know, certain angles you creeped up on people, you did certain assassination techniques. That was definitely my stuff. But coming in at number eight, I got another fighting gem for you that came out back in the early 90s. I think it was around 97, 97, 96. It was another early fighting game known as Bushido Blade. Now, Bushido Bay, that's a love-hate type of situation now because, you know, you either played Bushido Blade or you got played in Bushido Blade. Bushido Blade was supposed to simulate real live sword fights. So you could win a match if you sliced a certain part of the body and that was it or you know shoot you, you you could win a match but you could lose an arm shoot you could even lose a leg in that game that's how crazy it was and then you could fight with different swords had different styles of fighting and shoot even different people different characters on there had like different specialties with the swords that they used which was very awesome very awesome definitely bushido blade needs a remake hands down I will say, I never played Bushido Blade, but given how the game looks and just having like memories of seeing it in old like Game Informer magazines, I definitely would play it if they remade it today. But coming in at number nine, I'm at to give it to Time Crisis. It's essentially a rail based first person shooter. You could also play it at the arcades. It came bundled with what was called the Gun Con, which brought the arcade given style like to your living room. I mean, imagine what a remastered Time Crisis could look like on modern PC hardware or say on modern consoles. You can add things like a visible gun on screen or you can also introduce VR like imagine blending the elements from Time Crisis 4 and starting all the way from the beginning and giving us a remake or a remaster with the from the story which because Time Crisis did actually have a story y'all it also had like an incredible sound design and like sound quality and it made the game feel like an overall action movie so it felt satisfying once you're clearing out levels and you're just dodging between cover or behind cover technologies like ray tracing and modern graphics i think time crisis especially again in a vr setting right would be especially dope i don't play vr games that much y'all but time crisis i think i would give that one a shot again give us even a modern gun con using like bluetooth technology where we wouldn't have to rely on cords and whatnot but Time Crisis, again, that's number nine. Definitely deserves a remake or a remaster. Reintroduce rail-based shooters, bring them back, bring back the arcade-style level of games to modern living rooms and desktops. Man, Time Crisis was that work. I remember going over my boy Jay Crib. He had the gun con. We would go ham on that. Ham, that thing was crazy. And I remember the quarters that I spent in on the arcade. You, know, you had the foot on the pedal, you had it ready. And then, the, you know, the gun had the, the recoil. The clack, clack, clack. Oh, that thing was crazy back in the day. All right. Now, lastly, coming in at number 10, we got Fear Effect. Now, Fear Effect was one of the early games, came out 2000, that dealt with the cell shaded type situation. 
not a lot of you know games had that but it was very unique had a great story oh my goodness it was another crazy type espionage game man but definitely definitely that game definitely needs a remake. Okay, not bad. Yeah, Fear Effect, another one looks good. And that kind of defines the purpose of this list, right, y'all? Like, the idea is to introduce these games that are all, like, 20 years old to a fresh new audience. I mean, I was around during that time, and I was definitely gaming on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2, you know what I mean? But it would still benefit by, you know, reintroduce some of these games that a lot of us, let alone not even heard of, but never even played. But that's our list of the top 10 Sony classics that definitely, definitely deserve and or need a remake. That's all folks. I'm glad y'all checked this out. It's been fun. Thanks for giving this one a watch. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and also tell us in the comments what you get, what games you want to see remade, you know? So come check us out. Tell us what you think. Unlimited Mag, dining off.